guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be my review for The Fosters Season 1, Episode 17, Kids in the Hall. And this was a pretty big episode, and I really enjoyed the episode because what I liked was that, even one of the things I really liked is that even though Callie is no longer in Girls United, you know, the girls' home, she's still visiting them. They're, they still have a big part in the story, and I really do like that about um their characters. I like seeing their story arc. I like seeing where they're going, and I, I, I like that because you can't just end with her leaving. That's not how it works in life. You know, you see people, you know, they have a lot of connections with her. They really made her think a lot of things, so... I'm very happy that she, they, uh, that they continued that. And I also like um, the direction that uh, Brandon's storyline is going. It's definitely very cool. So let's just get to this episode. So the main plot is, um, has to do with Callie. And uh, her principal is very worried about Callie. She knows that Callie basically isn't in any groups or teams and feels like her participation would help her assimilate to life with the Fosters. And it might even help her not run away again if she has more roots of the school. And, of course, you know, Lena wants what's best for her. So, however, she didn't like the idea that anyone was thinking she and Steph couldn't handle Callie as part of their own. But the principal did point out that all of the kids... The only bad of all their kids, the only one that hasn't come as close as falling or has gone suspended was Brandon. He appears to be the normal one. And uh, Brandon, normal, pff, he's not normal at all at this point. Uh, you know, he's stealing his mother's keys to her office. And, you know, he's still making a, he still accept, he accepted a fake ID much too easily. And, um... Callie, on the other hand, though, she still wants to be a model citizen since returning. She even helps out Mariana, um, which I'll get to in a second, but, um... She's keeping her friendships with Kiara and Daphne. They got very close during their time together at the Outreach House, and now they've helped her see what she couldn't do before. Callie is a talent with photography, which was definitely very cool. I thought that was really cool that we kind of... That was a nice little uh, uh, side plot that we got, that she kind of has a talent with photography, and I like that. Um, she took a picture of Kiara, and it helped her friend find a decent foster family. So Callie wants to pursue taking more pictures to help out foster children, and while Lena is, Lena is pleased by this, Steph is hoping she'll make better friends from the venture. She wasn't feeling too comfortable finding two juvenile delinquents in her kitchen. I thought it was a cute scene, honestly. I really do like the two friends. They are very sweet and everything, and I really do like them. And you do see that they genuinely care about Callie, and Callie genuinely cares about them like they were her own family, because... In a way, they kind of were her family for a couple of weeks, and I, I really enjoyed all, all those scenes. I thought that was definitely really big, and I, you know, I definitely enjoyed a lot of that. Uh, meanwhile, we have Brandon. Now, Brandon is with his new friend, Vico, who is a really bad influence. Uh, he took Brandon out to a bar, then after hearing about all of his troubles with Callie, Vico offered to be his wingman. The only thing that stopped Brandon from going home with some random stranger was running into his dad's girlfriend, this very same woman uh, that Mike met through Alcohol's Anonymous class. If you remember, he met that woman through Alcohol's Anonymous last week, and uh, that's where we are now. So it was later on that Brandon began to worry about more than himself. He's actually scared of the girlfriend that the girlfriend might hurt his father's chance at sobriety. And uh, Mike has fallen off the wagon before, and he doesn't want that to happen again. So in a way, you know, we know he's what he's doing is wrong, but he's actually doing this just to um, fix everything his father has done wrong. That's what he's doing. He's doing it to fix things. As bad as it is what he's doing, there is a purpose for doing that. I like that he's not completely crazy and he hasn't completely lost his mind, but I do think what he's doing is wrong, and uh, I do kind of like the story. I know it is pretty big. Uh, meanwhile, also, Callie can't make any friends at school because Talia has already poisoned the water, and, uh, you know, Mariana's having trouble problems as well. And, um, you know, it's pretty big what happens uh, with Callie. She can't really... And the very same night, uh, Callie's taking pictures with the foster kids, for the foster kids, and a couple of e-readers were stolen. Uh, Kindles, basically. His father, you know, his father had stolen all those Kindles. So, uh, Callie thought Daphne, you know, Brandon's father had stolen all the Kindles. Um, so Callie thought Daphne had did it, seeing her as her friend had been struggling with independent living. And that's why she lied to Lena by saying she didn't give the keys to anyone, yet she still comforts Daphne and gets yelled at. Daphne swears she didn't steal anything, and if someone committed a crime, then it was probably Brandon. And, uh, she is correct because, uh, Daphne swears she saw him that night, and Brandon, on the other hand, denies being there. He tells Kelly he was too busy with the family dinner to stop by at the school. Sadly, he's lying through his teeth. Because uh, Callie was buying his story all the way to catching sight of his car in one of her photos taken that night. So, 
How did he do it? He let Vic go to use the faculties and his friend betrayed him. He went outside of their plans to make some extra money and when Brandon found out what he told Vic to return, the items were anonymously turned in. So uh, again, he stole all these Kindles and uh, it's not, um, when I say his father, it wasn't his father. He actually stole them. And uh, Vic was not very, really that good of a friend and um, you know, it, it's, it's, that's basically how that plot ended. It ended with Callie basically realizing that, um, Brandon needs, you know, is doing all this bad stuff. And, it, you know, she needs to help him out. And, because if she doesn't, it's going to get really, really bad for the both of them. And, and, you know, you really don't want that to happen to them. And I really like where this plot is going. I definitely am really enjoying it a lot. And I really enjoy, you know, I just, I really enjoy where this plot went. It was definitely very, very good. So now let's get to um, the other uh, plot, which had to do with, um, let's go to uh, Jesus first, because I want to talk about his plot, because I really liked his plot. His plot had to do with Emma. Now, uh, Mar Mariana does point out to him uh, that he does have a girlfriend. He says, you know, oh, I thank you, Captain Obvious, that he's aware of that. You can clearly see that he and Emma have a lot of chemistry. And you know what? I really like Emma. I think she's a really great guy for Jesus. She really cares about him. She definitely likes him. You know, we definitely saw some of that, especially towards the end of this episode. We saw, especially in the episode Padre, at the end of that episode, we started to see that she genuinely has feelings for Jesus, and they are genuine feelings. They're not just, uh, you know, friend. They're, she definitely wants to be his girlfriend. Um, and uh, they're talking and everything. And while this is happening, uh, they're in this, um, they're in this class. They're, they're in this class, basically, and while they're in the class, you know, you know, while they're in the class, um, in the wrestling class, uh, she is basically, um, not hurt, you know, they, they say she keeps being treated like a girl, she doesn't want to be treated like a girl, she, she wants people to hit her, like if she was a guy, and she, she kind of feels bad by this, and, you know, he just kind of gives her this whole speech about it, says that she is a girl, and, um, Basically, um, what happens is, uh, you know, easily get room with one little wrestling match. And it's hard for her to be on the wrestling team, and it gets harder when she has to overpower her friends. And they both wait in around the same, so their coach asked them to duel it out on the mat to see who would be representing their high school com com competition day. And Jesus was winning, and then he abruptly threw the game just for Emma. And she actually is really upset about this. And that only made her mad. She didn't want to be handed anything, and out of frustration... Or possible hidden things just out of nowhere, she kisses him. And I was like, yes, they kissed. I was really happy because I really love these two together and I really would like them to start something. And um, there goes the chance of him not seeing her as a girl. She says specifically, I don't want you to see me as a girl. And then she kisses him. What do you want? Do you want him to see you as a girl or not? You just said that. But I guess she probably said that because she was upset. And I'm thinking she actually was upset because... Um, he, she knows that he is with, um, with Lexi, and, and she's kind of upset about that. So then it basically ends with, you know, it basically ends, that plot ends with, um, with them having one last confrontation. They talk, and he says that he is going to break up with Lexi. Uh, because she said she's not, she does not do cheating, she does not do that sort of thing, she does not want to have an affair with Jesus. If she, if he wants to be with her, he has to break up with Lexi first. And now he's prepared to do so, which I'm happy about because, honestly, I knew this long-distance relationship was not going to work, and I thought it was a ridiculous idea. And now we know specific, and now we know um, that it definitely is not going to work. So that plot is basically, that's basically how that plot, um, that plot went. And I, I really thought it was a very strong plot. I really am enjoying Jesus's plot this season. And I really like this new girl, Emma. I really do hope they start something. And I think they will, but I'm really hoping that they do. So um, now let's go to Mariana's plot. Mariana's plot, I was really happy about her because Callie actually, as we, as I said, she's basically helping everybody and she actually helped out Mariana because, you know, Mariana had foolishly ditched Zach, you know, um, Chase turned out to be a really bad guy who just wanted sex probably, uh, you know, but I mean, that's what she kind of implied and... You know, Mar as Mariana's having a very hard time at school because Chase has actually lied that they, um, you know, that they actually hooked up and they had sex. That's what Chase said. Chase said that they had sex and they hooked up and it was like a one-night stand thing. 
and uh, Lena and Steph do find out about it, and they were forced into having a talk with her. And uh, then we get a very awkward, kind of funny scene, actually, because, I mean, Mariana did this to herself. Whether she, you know, she knows that. She knows she did it to herself. And she realizes it in the scene. And, you know, the, the difference between interest and pushing things so far, and Lena had invited her co-worker to the house for dinner, and uh, it was also the night that Steph invited Mike and his girlfriend around as well, so the women declared to make dinner party out of it, and, uh, you know, that, that was um, pretty, uh, pretty interesting. But what basically ends up happening is they confront her, and she says, wow. Why did I trust Talia? How could I have trusted Tal? You know, how could I have trusted Talia? She realizes that trusting Talia was really the not be not the best thing to do. And what ends up happening is Zach and her actually get their revenge on Chase. So uh, Zach publishes this article, basically saying that um, you know, he wrote he writes a terrible review of Chase's play, and he lets it go by print. He never liked the way Chase was targeting her, and he's all too willing to let bygones be by bygones between him and Mariana. And he said they are really good friends, and you can clearly see that he wants them to be a little bit more than friends, but we'll just have to see what happens there. But I'm glad that Mariana woke up in this episode, because she had to. She had to wake up. She had to stop being a stupid bitch, and I'm glad she woke up in this episode. Um, because she was stupid. She was being an idiot. Um, she always, you know, she always has been a stupid person since day one of this show, definitely. So that was Mariana's plot line. And then the last thing we have to talk about is, uh, Steph and Lena. Not much going on with Steph and Lena, except she did find it odd that Steph wasn't on the same page. She found a moment alone with, with Lena and demanded an answer. Lena isn't generally fawning over just anyone, and when Steph asked her on it, Lena explained how she thinks she found the perfect sperm donor. They've been discussing what kind of donor, uh, they wanted, they want, if, if, if he should be black or white, but none of that matters now. And at least to Lena, Timothy is highly educated, and she likes him as a person. So, that's basically where this episode ends, and I, I enjoyed um, the episode overall. I thought it was a really good episode. Um, a lot of things I really like. One of the things is I really am enjoying uh, Callie's plot as she's trying to now basically fix things for herself, which I like. Um, I like that she's doing that. I'm also really enjoying um, Brandon's plot. Very intense, not really knowing where that's going to go. I think he's going to end up in jail. I think he will. Uh, you know, he is stealing Kindles, and, you know, Callie is going to have this secret on her back now. The question is, is she going to tell someone, or is she going to not say anything and just tell, you know, basically blackmail Brandon into doing something? I think that's what might end up happening, because she does love him like a brother, so, I mean... It is pretty, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Also, what's going to happen with Emma and Jesus? Do you think Jesus will really break up with Lexi? I can't, I don't know. I think he probably will. I really hope he's moving on. I really hope he does break up with her because uh, Emma's the perfect girl for him at this point. And also, will Mariana and Zach get together? We don't really know at this point. It seems like it's just a friendship. But will she see that Zach does have genuine feelings for her? She did realize she was on a date with Zach in, um, on, on last week's episode. She did realize that. So, um, that's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be my review of Teen Wolf. So, see you then. Bye.